So imagine this little uh, chubby little girl with short black hair sitting on a desk, playing Pokemon Go, playing Pokemon Game Boy, uh, eating chips, stuffing her face. And then imagine that, that when you're around 10 to 12 years old, you have this fear of not belonging. I think as a child, you should never feel that way. I think as a child, you should just worry about, you know, being happy, playing around. But that fear of not belonging, that fear of being an outcast, for me, that was growing up in Amsterdam. I grew up in the Netherlands, and I, it was my first language, and I never felt at home over there. I remember a teacher always looking down on her paper and I would know it would be my name. She would always look down, I would see her face and just look confused and trying to pronounce like, is it uh, Roshne, Efrede? Is, is that what it is? Oh my God. So I, I really hated that. I hated that, I hated that we couldn't you know, that we were such a, a foreign type of person that they can't even pronounce our name. If you can say Swarovski, if you can say all these names, you can say Roshani Afridi. And I felt that because of that, because of growing up like that, I felt that we here and there should have been more inclusive of people. Growing up, I always played with these little skinny blonde Barbies. Uh, for me, that was the definition of beauty. That was the definition of kind of like what I thought was pretty, what I thought I would want to look like growing up. Because growing up around me, everybody, nobody looked like me. Everyone had blonde hair, blue eyes, really cute. And I didn't, I didn't see myself re represented. I didn't see people like me represented in the media over there. And I knew that I didn't fit the mold, not that I do even now, but at that time, when you're at that age, you want to see someone that looks like you, you want to see yourself being represented. And at that time, it just wasn't the case. For me, being different is not something new. And it wasn't that until I moved to the US, to America, to California, that I was exposed to new ideas. I was exposed to uh, different norms, quote unquote norms of beauty, that I would see my own beauty. I would see people that would have an, uh, a perception of beauty of this is what's good, this is what's bad. And I think it's, and it's becoming more and more evident that, that those stigmas, those rules are being broken down more and more every day. When I moved to the US, I had a friend, uh, her name was Nagehan. She was uh, American born bred. She had Turkish descent and she wore a hijab. Now at this time, I would go out with her, I would go to the gym with her and people would be picking on her, they'd be telling her, you know, what is this hijab? Do you shower with it? What is that? People didn't understand, even though it's not, some, it's not a new concept. Lately, more and more, if you look into the media now, you see that Nike has a whole line of hijabs for girls now that want to do active, uh, that have active wear. We see brands like Dolce & Gabbana, they have stuff for hijabis now. Uh, about a couple months ago, I even did a, a shampoo commercial with Sun Silk, and two of the girls were hijabis. Now you're thinking, okay, so why are we, it's, it's about here. But no, why not? Why are, why are we so, so caught up on that? Why can't we be inclusive of everything? And I'm starting to notice more and more now that we are becoming more inclusive of everyone. Now, mashallah, in Pakistan, I've seen that we are inclusive of hijabi girls, but that's because we also have Islam as our main religion here. Abroad, that isn't the case, but somehow I've seen that it's a, it's a much bigger thing and it's, I'm, I'm happy about it 
but at the same time I don't want this to be a trend I don't want it to be a trend that people will use to you know capitalize on it but at the same time it's a really good thing because people are learning more about it and they're learning more about why people do it so as I began to grow up and learn and I I realized about the world around me that acceptance and inclusivity played a role a role that was played hand in hand in Pakistan women and men today um, get scarred and they get burned by whitening creams which is still a very weird and foreign concept for me because people are are lightening their skin to to look a certain way to to feel I don't know what it is that they're feeling to be accepted to um, to have this old way outdated way impractical way uh, and actually a very dangerous way of thinking why is it that we cannot why is it that actually why is it that all over South Asia this is still a thing why is it that we're still you know using these products to change our skin color why is it that about four shades darker than me might be bad but four shades lighter than me is like wow wow that's great you know this is the perfect shade why is that a thing isn't that a bit ridiculous when you think about it you're born with a certain tone why is it that in Pakistan right now girls think that it's necessary why is it that in the media right now girls are getting skin whitening skin bleaching done why does anybody know why is it maybe because we're still thinking in old ways are we still thinking about these old stigmas is that what it is why can't we move on from that there's nothing wrong with being darker there's nothing wrong with being lighter but it is wrong to say that one or the other is not correct one or the other should not be the norm in America recently I've seen more and more acceptance of different shapes of different sizes in people um, and it's uh, there's a retail store I'm sure a lot of girls might know even though I can see guys being already confused there's a retail store for for makeup and what girls usually put on is something called foundation to kind of cover whatever blemishes they have right so for the longest time this is up until about maybe a year or two ago they only had like a certain certain array a certain set of shades that was available to the public and those went from light to medium to basically where I'm at maybe a little bit darker than me now you have all these women over here all these dark beautiful olive toned dark toned women that were not accommodated for why was that why until now until recently until maybe last year is that a thing even I think even if I were to go to a store right now and I were to uh, go with one of my South Asian friends why is it that I'll be able to find what I need in my skin tone and somebody else is having a hard time why is that it doesn't make sense to me and it, it shouldn't make sense to anyone I think beauty is not defined by the shade of our skin but rather by the confidence to enjoy it you know lighter skin is not better we should take pride in our diverse diversity and I think one of I think only one company that comes to mind to me uh, that I have previously worked with which is why I know is called Nabila's so that's a company where I saw that they celebrated different skin colors that they celebrated uh, different models because I was there and I saw that and I was like this is great this is more of what we need we need acceptance more and more even even over here because we think that you know we we are we are accepting of this and that and that but still I find that we are very narrow in our approach especially for women to what is acceptable and what is not so over the past uh, few months I've had the privilege to honestly be center stage in Pakistan's media industry I've been on TV I've been on magazines I've been on catwalks and I've even had a weird like 40 foot billboard like statue cut out of me going like this on the highway 
And I was just looking at that and thinking back, being that chubby fat kid eating popcorn, I would have never thought that, you know, one day I'll be standing there, right? I'll be like this crazy billboard over there. Why at that time did I not realize my potential? Why at that time was I like, oh, you know what? My hair is like, it's black. It's not, you know, cute with highlights and blonde and short and this and that. Why is my skin so dark? Why is I, I feel like there's so many girls that do have that and boys too. Like I can't be this, I can't be that. Why, why can you not? If I had thought like that and I continue to think like that, I would never be standing here today. I would be sitting there thinking about what do I have, what do I not have, am I good enough? No, it's ridiculous. Honestly, it's just ridiculous and it pisses me off. So I think more and more, we need to show more inclusivity. Not just, I'm not just talking about girls, I'm talking about boys too. The freedom to express, the freedom to not be stigmatized for doing certain things, for saying certain things. I think that's very, very important. We are, I think we are definitely defined by what makes us different. Not, it's good to keep us all together, but what makes us different is what keeps us together, is what elevates us. The biggest challenge here is that the, tr that the world will try and mold you. It will try and mold you to be this, per this person that's you know, comfortable right in the middle, you know, like Goldilocks, like not too hot, not too cold, not too dark, not too white, like, you know, like right comfortably in the middle, you know, good, good and nice. And I think that's stupid. I think that you should take a chance. You should be who you are. If someone doesn't like it, then what? Then what? There's a variety there. There's something there. There's something there that you have that the next person might not have. And there's something there that the, somebody else will look up to and say, you know what? Dude, I'm like that. That's amazing. I wish someone was there for me to be like that. The more I work in Pakistan, the more I see these kinds of things. And I think we must cultivate them. We must grow from our differences. And honestly, uh, my, my uh, topic was called uh, the perfect picture. There's no such thing as the perfect picture. There's a, no such thing as the perfect picture. You know, you can, be, you can be an engineering student, you can be an art student, you can be an activist, you can be green, white, blue, purple, it doesn't matter. What matters is you have a brain, you have a voice, you are different, and you have different beliefs. And I think you should empower yourself with that. You should empower because you are different. You should feel empowered because you can bring something to the table. You can be different. And I challenge each and every one of you to keep pushing yourself. When you see, when you see this kind of stuff happen in the world, I hope that wherever you guys progress to, that you guys will stop this kind of injustice. I hope you, I know you all are very educated, but sometimes being educated, you still hold on to stigmas. You still hold on to a way of thinking. Perhaps think around it. See, see people in different ways. Don't see directly like, oh, this person is that, this person is that. Think about the whole picture. And I hope I challenge you guys enough for you to have a little bit of change in there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening.